Welcome. In this video we will cover the topic of drug development process. New insights into a disease, great idea or sometimes lucky coincidence can lead to discovery of a new potential drug. In the early stage of drug development, a potential drug, first must be, purified, characterized, and tested in labs, in cell and animal studies, before ever undergoing clinical trials. Only a small portion of potential drugs reaches the point of being tested in a clinical trial. Before testing a new drug in people, researchers must find out whether it has the potential to cause serious harm, also called toxicity. Preclinical studies involve in vitro, in test tube, and in vivo, on animal, experiments using wide-ranging doses of the study drug to obtain preliminary efficacy, toxicity and pharmacokinetic information. These tests assist pharmaceutical companies to decide whether a drug candidate has scientific merit for further development as an investigational new drug. In preclinical studies, regulatory agencies require researchers to use good laboratory practices, GLP, for preclinical laboratory studies. Usually, preclinical studies are not very large. However, these studies must provide detailed information on dosing and toxicity levels. After preclinical testing, researchers review their findings and decide whether the drug should be tested in people. Clinical trials are conducted to allow safety and efficacy data to be collected for a new drug. It is important to test medical products in the people they are meant to help. It is also important to test medical products in a wide variety of people because drugs can work differently in people of various ages, races, ethnicity, and gender. These clinical trials can only take place once satisfactory information has been gathered on the quality of the product, its non-clinical safety, and after regulatory authority approval is granted in the country where the trial is taking place. Clinical trials should be done in accordance with a good clinical practice. GCP guideline and they should follow other regulatory requirements depending in which country they are conducted. Before a clinical trial is initiated, foreseeable risks and inconveniences should be weighed against the anticipated benefit for the individual trial subject and society. A trial should be initiated and continued only if the anticipated benefits justify the risks. First step in this process should be study design and plan. Researchers must define answer to a specific research questions related to a new drug. They should also define objectives and a condition or disease for which to use of a new drug. A detailed study protocol must be created for every phase of clinical trial. Clinical trials are conducted in phases. Every phase had its own purpose and focus with regards on safety and efficacy of the new drug. Phases are also different with regards to number of study participants. However, one thing is in common to every phase of clinical trial. All study participants must be volunteers who give their written consent for participation in clinical trials. First phase of clinical trial and first testing of a new drug on human subjects is called phase 1. This phase includes trials designed to assess the safety, pharmacovigilance, tolerability, pharmacokinetics, and pharmacodynamics of a drug. These trials are usually conducted in medical care unit where subjects can be observed by full-time medical staff. Phase 1 trials normally include dose ranging with the aim to figure out the highest dose humans can take without serious side effects. Safety is the main concern of the Phase 1 of clinical trials. What's make Phase 1 different from the other phases, is the fact that usually a small group of healthy volunteers will be selected for participation. In other phases, only a subjects with a condition or disease for which the drug is intended can participate in the trial. In some cases, a new drug cannot be tested on healthy subjects even in phase 1, then a phase 1 subjects should also be a patients with condition or disease for which the drug is intended. This exception to the rule most often occurs in oncology, cancer, and HIV drug trials. Also, other difference between phase 1, and other phases of clinical trials is that volunteers are paid an, inconvenience fee for their time spent in the medical care unit. According to the FDA, approximately 70% of medical product move on to phase 2. Once the initial safety of the study drug has been confirmed in phase 1 trials, a phase 2 of clinical trial can begin. Phase 2 continues phase 1 safety assessments in a larger group of volunteers and patients, and in this phase the emphasis is also on drug effectiveness. This phase aims to obtain preliminary data on whether the drug works in people who have a certain disease or condition. Phase 2 of a clinical trial involves several hundred participants who are living with the condition that the new drug is meant to treat. Phase 2 studies are sometimes divided into Phase 2, A, and Phase 2, B. Phase 2, A, 
is specifically designed to assess dosing requirements, how much drug should be given. Phase 2, B, is specifically designed to study efficacy, how well the drug works at the prescribed dose. When the development process for a new drug fails, this usually occurs during Phase 2 trials, when the drug is discovered not to work as planned, or to have toxic effects. The FDA estimates that about 33% of new drugs move on to Phase 3. Phase 3 studies are randomized controlled multicenter trials on large patient groups that may vary from several hundred up to few thousand subjects depending on the disease or medical condition studied. Phase 3 studies are often done in many places across the world at the same time. This phase aimed to be the definitive assessment of how effective the new drug is. The main purpose of Phase 3 is to evaluate how the new drug works in comparison to existing medications for the same condition. To move forward with the trial, researchers and investigators need to demonstrate that the drug is at least as safe and effective as existing treatment options. Because of their size and comparatively long duration, Phase 3 trials are the most expensive, time-consuming, and difficult trials to design and run, especially in therapies for chronic medical conditions. Phase 3 trials are usually double-blind which means that neither the participant nor the investigator knows which medication the participant is taking. This helps to eliminate bias when interpreting results. To do this, investigators use a process called randomization. This involves randomly choosing some participants to receive the new drug and others to receive an existing medication or placebo, depending on study design. A computer program is often used to randomly assign people to the trial arms. There can be more than two treatment groups in Phase three trials. The control group gets the standard of care treatment. The other groups get a new treatment. Every participant in a phase 3 study is watched closely. The study can be stopped early if the side effects of the new drug are too severe or, if new drug don't show sufficient efficacy. Once a drug has proved to be safe and effective for its intended use, after phase 3 trials, the trial results are usually combined into a large document containing a comprehensive description of the methods and results of human and animal studies, manufacturing procedures, formulation details, and shelf life. This collection of information makes up the regulatory submission that is provided for review to the appropriate regulatory authorities in different countries. They will review the submission, and, it is hoped, give the sponsor approval to market the new drug for the use. Phase 4 of clinical trials are also known as post-marketing surveillance trials. Phase 4 trials involve the safety surveillance, pharmacovigilance, and ongoing technical support of a drug after it receives permission to be sold. Even after testing a drug on thousands of people, all the effects of the treatment may not be known. Some questions may still need to be answered. The drug is tested in several hundreds or thousands of patients. This allows for better research on short-lived and long-lasting side effects and safety. For instance, some rare side effects may only be found in large groups of people. Doctors can also learn more about how well the drug works and if it's helpful when used with other treatments. Severe and harmful effects discovered in Phase 4 trials may result in a drug being no longer sold or restricted in its use. Drug development is a complex process. It is estimated that less than 1% compounds that are discovered, reaches the stage of being tested in clinical trials. Also, it is a very long process. Duration of overall development process, vary from source to source. Estimates range from 6 up to 15 years from initial drug discovery, until the drug is available for use in general public.